This is a video about Edward Borden's work in the War Artists Advisory Committee and how he used his wartime drawings and paintings in illustrations afterwards, like in these two books. When the Second World War broke out in 1939, Edward Borden had already established his reputation as an illustrator and painter of landscapes in watercolours like these. Borden was appointed one of the first official war artists and was sent to join the British Army in France. Here are his memories of Dunkirk alongside his watercolours. We got nearer and nearer to Dunkirk and I saw the general staff embarking. <laughs> well, rats go first, you know. <laughs> the planes were coming over in waves and most of the time I spent lying down under privet bushes in a small park or dodging about. A boat came in quite near to where the Major and I were standing. We got on board. There was no trouble with the crossing down below and men were absolutely exhausted. They were lying in heaps everywhere. And then I received the news that uh, I could go to the Middle East. I made one or two drawings of the mosque of uh, Muhammad Ali and uh, so on. From Egypt, Borden went to Libya, Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Syria, Iraq and Saudi Arabia. During his return journey to England, his ship was torpedoed, travelling from the Red Sea via Cape Town, then north up the Atlantic. He explains the night of the attack here. Oh, it happened in the evening as we were sitting down to have drinks. We must have been about 600 miles off Lagos. The shock naturally was a very sudden one. We were all went on deck. As soon as I got on deck, the boat was listing so much to one side. Service people, there were a number of women, there were even some children. Italian prisoners, one saw enough of their drowned bodies in the next five days, everywhere. I think the torpedo must have hit the lower deck where they were. It didn't go quite according to the lifeboat drill, because the boat was listing so much to one side, they could only be lowered on, on one side of the boat. And there was a rope hanging down, and I, and I went down that into a boat, which was just on the point of uh, taking off. In the book Traveller's Verse, at Borden Illustrated in 1946, the lifeboat picture is poignant with that account. After five days at sea, Borden's lifeboat was picked up by a French ship, where he painted these watercolours as he continues. They landed us at Casablanca and immediately put us into cattle trucks and took us inland to camp, you know, with the barbed wire around. And there we were for two months. Camp life was a very primitive one, spent quite a bit of the morning looking for a tiny bit of paper which one could take to the lavatory. Liberated by the Americans, he was shipped across the Atlantic in an American convoy to the USA, then back to Britain. He accepted the chance to travel, returning to the Middle East and journeying around Cairo, Baghdad, Jeddah, Tehran and Ur of the Chaldees. He was drawing all of the time and ended his war duties in Rome. During the war, Borden really perfected his work as a portrait artist and got used to sketching works quickly and finding quiet corners to finish them in, as he elaborates here. There are a number of portraits of the men, but it happened to be Ramadan, so that uh, after they'd been posing for about an hour, they began to wilt. They felt the strain of sitting to be much too great. After the conflict in November 1945, Noel Carrington, who was the head of Puffin Books at Penguin, was planning the book The Arabs. With an abundance of sketchbooks, having travelled across Arabia and staying with the Bedouins, Marsh Arabs and the Sudanese, he was the perfect illustrator for the job. As you can see in the images here, this is how Borden recycled some of his paintings from the war and used them as much simpler illustrations for the Arabs. The lithograph policeman demonstrates the cheerful nature of the line drawings. It also shows how he used paintings and sketchbooks to make the book as accurate as it could be. After the war, Borden stayed in Cheltenham while repairs and work were made to his home, Brick House. It was the only building in Great Bardfield to suffer bomb damage. But Borden also used the opportunity to make alterations and build a studio at the back of the house. The house was also used and abused by the Home Guard during the war. This painting is by fellow Great Bardfield artist John Aldridge. Now at home at Brick House, the work for the Arab books continued during 1946. 
Here is another of Borden's wartime Marsh Arabs illustrations. You can see these pictures side by side and how Borden translated the illustrations into lithographs for the Puffin book. You can see various examples here. Here is an interior painting of the Madame Medif full of people, and again, an illustration for the Puffin book. The Arabs book wasn't published until 1947. The text of the book was by Robert Bertram Sargent, nicknamed Bob Sargent. He was a Scottish scholar and traveller. Here is the Mosque Muhammad Ali in Cairo, and a black and white illustration for the Puffin book drawn from the other side. Returning to the book Traveller's Verse, we see illustrations from the Arabs appear in this book. The market from the Puffin book is the same building, and we can see the illustration of the mosque here again. Traveller's Verse was a collection of poetry chosen by Mary Gwyneth Lloyd Thomas, one of Charlotte Borden's friends. In fact, Borden would be able to use his wartime drawings and memories of Greece and Rome for other plates in this book. It seems that after Rome, Athens was a disappointment to Borden, as he mentions here. Suggested I went to Greece, and so I went by air. It was my first time I'd seen Greece, and uh, very disappointed on the first sight of Athens. It didn't seem to have the grandeur I was expecting. Interestingly, the Arabs was never reprinted because Borden illustrated Muhammad on the last page, although that illustration does not appear in this video. No one at Penguin in the 1940s realised the offence it would cause. The Commonwealth Relations Officer wrote to Penguin suggesting the removal of the image if it was reprinted, but it was not. The painting here is of Mohammed bin Abdullah et Achan, King Ibn Saud's representative. The painting is a copy made in 1966 of a painting Borden made in 1943. It was made at the request of a British petroleum executive. The wall of petrol cans in the background with the BP logo on was the executive suggestion. What is curious to me about this painting is parts of it turn up twice in the Puffin Arabs book. To the right is the hawk, the coffee pots and the boy, with the two men standing behind the wall, and at the bottom is the illustration of the sitter in the same pose. Another part of that BP 1966 commission was a giant mural seen here. It is now in the Chelsea and Westminster Hospital, but originally was painted for BP's Britannia House in 1966. Here is a photograph of it in place. Here are ink illustrations made to look like liner cuts. Focus the Gardener and How Martins the Hammering, likely sourcing his marketplace memories. In 1986, Borden was due to release a landscape book of his war letters and paintings in a signed limited edition format published by the Hertwood Press, but the project stalled and ended up being rekindled and published in a cheaper unsigned format in 1989. This published edition here features two prints on the cover. Borden had made these lithographs as signed prints to sell alongside the book launch in 1986, here is a similar painting of the Marsh Arabs and maybe where the inspiration came from. In the corner of the print we can see their traditional reed homes as Borden explains. A large tunnel-like building made of reeds, the reeds being bound together in bundles and then made into arches. So you have a series of arches and then reed mats cover the space between. Here is a view of the interior. Here we see the other lithograph of Dunkirk, based on this painting here. Many years after the war, Borden illustrated Thomas Beckford's Valfec, an Arabian tale for the Folio Society in 1958. To the left is Borden's original watercolour, and to the right is an illustration from the book. I find these illustrations weak and they look rushed, I can't help wonder if the printers translated the designs into lithographs and not Borden himself. In 1970, Borden again illustrated Valfec, but this time just the cover for one of the Oxford University Press's paperback editions. 
He also illustrated the histories of Herodotus for the limited editions book club in a signed double volume. As you can see here, this is Johnson's Rasselas in 1975 for the Folio Society, with much happier outcomes compared to Wolfeck. I thought it was good to end on the biblical works that Borden made. For the world's greatest story, an examination of the New Testament, Borden made many illustrations, and here are some. And here are his illustrations for the Oxford Illustrated Old Testament, a five-volume series illustrated by contemporary artists. Borden's work features in volumes one and two. If you enjoyed this video, please look up my blog inexpensiveprogress.com.